All right, Nation, really appreciate everybody for tuning in. My name is Law Nation, L-A-W Nation. Uh, we're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys, right? And don't forget to hit that like button and share this content. Let a friend, neighbor, folk know where to go when they want to tune in to Cowboy Sports Talk and Beyond. And we're talking about Blake Jarwin. Blake Jarwin. I got to say it one more time. Blake Jarwin. Is it Blake the Snake now? What, what's his name going to be? Because I'm hearing that he's slithering through this entire offense and he's just wrecking havoc against the defense, challenging the defense on the vertical seam routes. Now, a lot of people will look at it and say, well, Law, it's okay. It's going to be the same offense that we had last year. He's going to produce the same numbers that we did the year before or the year before that or the year before that. You know how that thing go, but I will tell you guys this. Blake Jarwin, a thread in the middle of the field. Oh, why is that so important, Law? Well, let me tell you guys this right quick. A little story. There was a certain game that we played last year, and Blake Jarwin got in for probably hmm, a, a teaspoon size of snaps in that particular game. But we were able to drive the ball down the field and score on a team that they called themselves Who That, right? It was Blake Jarwin. Think about this. Just, just think about this from a, a defensive perspective. You're going to roll coverage Amari Cooper way, right? meaning that you're going to have the safety that's over the top creeping or lining up on the hash hash mark to really cheat to his side. And I'm talking about Amari Cooper because a lot of times people say, well, Amari Cooper is soft, law. Amari Cooper is trash, law. Amari Cooper don't do those things on the road because he disappeared. He plays the Houdini trick. And a lot of people only listen to the national media and those who out there who got the blue check mark and say, well, Amari Cooper is this and that. But reality is, is when you turn on the tape, you see otherwise. Team's gang plan to really slow down Amari Cooper by rolling the coverage. Oh, getting the safety over, over the top. They try to bracket, but that don't work that much. So they bracket the interior guy as it relates to the slot guy. That worked when we had Cole Beasley. And you will see that they'll bracket a little bit with uh, Randall Cobb last year. But that's a story of a different day. We're talking about roll coverages, right? So when they roll coverage, they got that top safety. Mm. And they got the underneath corner guy who really try to do that man-to-man -man type of stuff, right? Try to redirect, try to disrupt him at the line, knowing that he got safety help over the top. And he also had the linebackers peeping into the backfield because that's how much attention Amari Cooper is going to generate, right? So what they were saying last year is saying, okay, well, if the Cowboys really want to destroy us, let them. Let them pass the ball to Jason Witten. Let them get, we'll give them the middle of the field, basically. We'll give them. We, we will match it up one on one onto the outside with Michael Gallup. And guess what the Cowboys did? They played right into their hands. We forced balls to the outside. Yes, Amari Cooper still was able to win. Yes, Michael Gallup, when he was healthy and these sorts of things, when he was playing, yes, he won his one on ones because even Michael Gallup, he get the one on one action. But I come here to tell a lot of people, you can roll coverages all day you want to. So that's going to now force, that's going to force you to play one-on-one -on -one to Blake Jarwin. Vertical seam route, deep post, skinny post, all of those things, deep out routes. It's going to happen this year because now you're going to have to say to yourself, oh, do I have the linebacker on Jarwin or do I kick my safety on him? Do I bring in my best slot corner to hold Gar Jarwin, huh? I'm going to tell you guys this right quick. News flash. They got a guy named Sidarian Lamb. He wears number 88. They can line up into the inside and outside. Can you imagine a play before the whistle is called or what have you that you send? And you're telling your DBs to line up a certain way because you got 88 lined up into the inside. Hmm. And then all of a sudden before the snap, you motion 88 to the outside and you bring in number 19, if you know what I mean, into the inside. Or can you imagine a play that's being called that you look at it and you see number 89 
for your mind, your jawing, lined up all the way to the outside. Don't you know what that do to your defense, Dan? Because now you're going to sit there and say, okay, what is the responsibility? Because Jarwin can run routes like a wide receiver. <laughs> so in this training camp, he's been the camp favorite, him and as well as Schultz. And I love the fact that Schultz is stepping up his game because of this right here. All of last year and the year before that, we were looking at Schultz as nothing more than a blocking tight end. That's how I was looking at him. And when he ran his routes, it was rounded routes. It wasn't really like he had a lot of speeds off his routes. And it was more so, more no more than five or six yards. Basically, they said, hey, here you go. Here, here, here you go. Here's the Jason Witten menu. Run those menus right there. <laughs> that's, the, that's the menu you're going to run. It was nothing spectacular to the mind, right? Jarwin came in. We knew what he was going to do. But now they are actually putting him in. <laughs> Schultz out there running vertical routes. That's crazy. We didn't see these things before. So this team is different, baby. Oh, Lord, I can't believe you're talking about the tight end in Dallas land outside of a number 82. Well, I'm telling you guys, this tight end crew, whoo, whoo, 86 and 89 for your mind. Oh, and another news, they, they, they also was talking about if there was a training camp hero, you have to throw in number 88. He, he's been um, blowing up training camp. They are already now, to me personally, I like to see it on the field. Everybody have reasons, but results are what matter. And yes, 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 he is just that dope and cold-blooded out there. They are already comparing this 88 to the previous 88. There's Brian. And not just when they was rookies, but they saying that he's like the 88 of 2014-ish 88. <laughs> I, I can't make this stuff up. So I'm sitting back like, man, I, I'm not finna, I'm not finna buy into that hype. I gotta see it on the field. I gotta see it against other DBs because I'm gonna say this again. Either our DBs are just 1000 percent trash, or this 88 is that really 2014 version of 88 you see what i'm saying you get what i'm talking about cowboy nation Ooh, that's a lot that's a big old pill that's a big old pill to swallow right there tough pill you know that's that's something that's like ripley's believe it or not right and i can't say this enough man i just want to see it on the field that's all i want to do i i know i know i know i know that when people think about this and they will say to themselves Oh, come on, man. We just we can't listen to the media. We can't listen to the Dallas Cowboys locals, right? Also, in other news, speaking of like crazy outlandish things to say early in the morning before football it doesn't actually happen or what have you as it relates to NFL one-on-ones or NFL actual games or what have you. Number three, one. When I stroll down my comment sessions, you know, I, I really, really love you guys when y'all post your comments because I love to read, right? Reading to, is to succeed, right? But read for success too, right? But I got to say this right quick, Cowboy Nation. I got to say this. A lot of people saying, man, Law, don't be disrespectful to Byron Jones, man. You can't sit here and with a straight face and say Byron Jones is trash and this guy is better than Byron Jones. You can't say that. That's not what I'm saying. And I believe that's not what everybody else is saying. What people are saying is that it's been a long time. And we ain't talking about Sam Cook, but it's been a long time coming. <laughs> and it's took forever for change to see number three one pull the ball out of the sky take the ball from the opposition being around the ball making these good plays and some, maybe some mental rookie mistakes and these sorts of things but to see it in practice right to get a pick six and things like that and i do know a lot of people going to be saying hey man who threw the ball i don't care about that because we had training camps with Matt Castle, yeah, Brandon Whedon, you know, even the left-handed wonder, right? Kellen Moore. 
and we didn't hear, hey, man, multiple interceptions here, multiple interceptions there, and you can't tell me anybody on this roster throws a ball like a Matt Castle or Brandon Weed, and you know. <laughs> my, my thing is, is this right here, Cowboy Nation. This 3-1 is different. This 3-1 is high pointing the ball. They said, and it's according to my dog 105.3, the fan Mike Fisher, who said earlier this morning, said that, hey, the interception that Diggs caught against Amari Cooper that Dak Prescott threw, it was a ball that was pretty much not a not an abnormal ball for that number 31 to jump. And he took it out of the sky and brought it into his chest and ran it all the way in for a pick six. Now, the way he described it, remember, I'm going out of second and third hand information. So if you guys got any rebuttal, reach out to Fisher. Go hit him up on his YouTube page at Mike Fisher. Go hit him up on Fish Report on his Twitter handle, what have you. But I'm going to say this. He said from his mouth <laughs> until all ears, right? He said that you can rewind the tape three years ago, five years ago, maybe 10 years ago, and you will not find a defensive back catching INTs like him. Now, if he so happened for the regular season to not look like that, then y'all can go after Mike Fisher. Don't come out the law, right? <laughs> but, but I will say this, this team is different. And I'm loving hearing this type of information for the nation. I do. And when we think about it, another uh, news of what he said earlier this morning was uh, a lot of times, and this is a true statement, DBs, defensive backs are wide receivers that can't catch the ball. That's not the case, nor the scenario with Diggs. He really think, and I think too, that Diggs could be a wide receiver in the National Football League. As that goes, man, the guy got good hands. So if you guys uh, enjoyed this video for today or for this morning or whatever time it is for your mind, uh, hit that like button, share this content, let a friend, neighbor, foe know where to go when they want to tune in to Cowboy Sports Talk and Beyond. My name is Law Nation, L-A-W Nation. Don't forget to hit that like button, share this content, let that friend, neighbor, foe know where to go when they want to tune into this type of stuff. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get this thing going, baby, the right way, the best way, the possible way, and that is the Super Bowl way because we got to go in that direction, and I'm thinking we're heading down that avenue, that road, that pathway. Let's go. Let's go, Cowboy Nation.